Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel Bytes tutorial. Today we're going to take a look at how to generate a specific list of items based on a criteria. And I'm going to do it in both an Office 365 function and also functions using previous versions of Excel. But before we jump into that, please take a minute to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Make sure you hit the bell icon so you'll get a notice whenever I put out a new video. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also find me at any of the social media sites you see here. So now, let's check out today's topic. So here's our scenario. I have a table. If I click on it and go to Table Design, you can see the table name is Employees. And I have a list of employees, and I put an X next to the day that they're working. So what I want to do is convert this into this chart here where I just list under each day the employee that has an X marked for that day. And we're going to use the filter function for those that have Office 365, and we'll use the index function plus a couple others for previous versions of Excel. So with the filter function, I'm just going to type equals filter. My array, I can just click here, and it will be the employees table and the employee column, comma. And I'm going to say for Monday that the employees table Monday column equals, in double quotes, X, close my parentheses, hit enter, and I get the list of employees that have Monday uh, marked with an X. So Alice Mason, Eileen Frank, Ricky Haley, etc. And that list looks perfect. Now I think I'd just be able to copy that across, but when I do notice, it doesn't give me the information I want. So I'm going to hit Control Z to undo that. The reason that is, is whenever you reference a table and a column, it's basically in a relative reference. So if I copy that across, notice this has employees table, employee as my array, and employees Monday as my column. When I copy this across, notice this has employees Monday, employees Tuesday. My array changed from employees table, employee column, to employees table Monday column and I don't want that array to change so I have to make that an absolute reference. So how you do that in Excel is you have to say I want my column to be from this column to this column. So in this case I have to put another square bracket then after the table name in brackets I'll put a colon another bracket select that column that I want, and then put two more square brackets. So I basically have said the employees table from the employee column to the employee column. And then my include will be employees Monday equals X. I hit enter, I get the same list here, but now when I copy it across, that array for my filter function remains absolute and it always stays employees table employee column because I've said make that array from the employee column to the employee column. So that's how you have to make absolute references using tables. So we've accomplished that with the filter function. Now let's do that same process but using functions from previous versions of Excel. So I'm going to start with typing equals index and my index, my array, is going to be this column. But as we just learned from our previous formula, I need to make that an absolute reference. So I have to put another square bracket colon, square bracket, select the employee column again, and then two square brackets. And now I've made the array on my index function an absolute array. Comma, what's my row number? Well, I'm going to use the small function and the if functions. And I want to say if my Monday column equals x, 
then give me the row number for that Monday column. Close that, close it again. Now I have to put in the K value for my small function. That tells me of that array, it's going to give me a list of row numbers where Monday column has an X. What's the first smallest, second smallest, third smallest, etc. as I copy that down. And I'm going to use the row function 1 colon 1. That'll give me a 1 for the first small function, a 2 as I copy it down, the third smallest, the fourth smallest, the fifth smallest, etc. I'm going to close that. Now, I don't need to put a column number in my index function because there's only one column there, but I need to subtract a 2, and you'll see why in a second. Close that parentheses, hit enter, and it gives me the same Alice Mason name. I copy it down. Again, I need to wrap this in an if error function to eliminate any errors that will occur if there's no more values that meet that criteria. Now I'm going to copy that down. I'll copy it across and I get the same results as I did when I used the filter function. Now the reason I had to put a minus 2 there, let's take a look at Cindy Ramsey here. If we look at from the index formula, if we look at the row number, I hit F9, it tells me it's row 9. And if I look at my list, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, Cindy Ramsey is in the ninth row. However, it's the 11th row of the worksheet because I didn't start my list until row 3. So I need to make sure I don't get the results of an 11, I need it to be 9. So if I didn't start my list until row 7, I would have needed to put a minus 6 there to make sure it gave me the correct row number. And that's how you can do this in Excel. So thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a thumbs up and if you haven't subscribed yet, please do so to any of the social networks you see here. Thanks a lot, have a great day, and happy excelling.